Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a preview to the Philadelphia Flyers and the Colorado Avalanche, the first game of the Mike Yo era, and Darrell Williams running the power play, a guy that, of course, has a lot of time spent with AV. Was kind of surprised he was not a guy that took over for Terrian when they made that hire in the offseason. Like I said in my video on AV getting fired, and Michelle Terrian wasn't let go after less, last season, excuse me. But obviously that's not what happened as he and AV were let go earlier this morning. But Jamie Baskow of Flyers Nitty Greedy, uh, he tweeted that Fletcher will look for a new assistant but will be patient with the coaching search. He said he has not even begun the search. Um, where obviously the Vancouver Canucks who axed Travis Green and Jim Benning already had a guy in mind. Uh, they brought in Boost Boudreaux. Um, the Flyers have guys that have all been rumored or thrown out by the fan base, whatever whatever that is from John Tortorella to Rick Tockett to Claude Julian to um, anybody really at that point um, that can just kind of come in and has experience and can get it done. I even saw somebody, which I don't know how, or Chris Noblaw, the guy that obviously did really good, he's Hartford Wolfpack's coach right now, on the power play with Axtell. But right now we have Mike Yo, and it seems like, which are confusing words that they're not going to move quick, but then when you saw the press release, like Jason Bertitas pointed out on Twitter, it looked like it said for tonight's game, Mike Yo is the interim coach, so that got people thinking, well, maybe Rick Tockett's in mind, maybe there is somebody in mind, but then Fletcher goes out and says that, but sometimes GMs just say things, and then you see things happen and transpire in a different way, so we'll have to see what happens, but either way, for tonight's game, we have Mike Yo behind the bench, Darrell Williams is going to be running the power play and controlling a little bit more of the offense, just like Michelle Terrian did, where then they're going to probably look for an assistant coach that's more, I would think, defensive-based. And then you can kind of um, have it go with you there. But I think you also might want to bring in an assistant coach that has a little bit more of an offensive background as well, maybe like a split guy, just because obviously Mike Yo, if you look at his coaching background, one of the reasons he got let go from St. Louis was they were not the best potent offensive team. He doesn't have the most track record of getting a team that has no goal, has goal issues to not have goal issues, I should say. So, like, we'll have to see if he can do that here. Obviously, coaches learn from their past experiences, and he's a guy that's 48 now in a bunch of experiences, so maybe he will turn the tide and be able to do that, but he does have the perception of being a more defensive coach and the reputation of being a more defensive coach. So you want to bring in guys that are more offensive minds. William will be man the power play, controlling the offense more. We'll see how he does. But I don't think you want to bring in just a defensive guy as this next assistant. You might want to bring in a more split guy. But anyway, off of that, for tonight's game, and for the Colorado Avalanche, it is going to be Eustace Anunin, the guy that won the rookie of the month, a former third-round pick, won the rookie of the month in the AHL, was blazing hot, and then came in against the Ottawa Senators and helped them get to overtime. So he's coming in feeling good about himself, where that seems like the right move for the Colorado Avalanche, because Jonas Johansson is really struggling this year in Dossie Kemper and Pavel Francois' absence, who's close to coming back, uh, played two conditioning games this far with the Colorado Eagles, one good, one bad. So he seems like he's very close to coming back. But Anunin's going to get the pipes tonight. Obviously, he's a young goaltender, albeit a guy that's very hot as a young goaltender right now. But you just got to be able to block him out, get the pucks on him, kind of get his nerves going early as a young netminder, and hopefully you'll be able to get some stuff on him. I expect more energy. Obviously, when a coach gets fired, you expect more jump, you expect more spunk, and you expect a little bit of fire out of the team. And when Chris Mayer of Nitty Gritty, Flyers Fan Mania 93, asked the question yesterday to Claude Giroux, he said, expect us to have an answer tomorrow, where now I really expect them to have an answer because you got your coach fired from how the way you were playing, from the way this team was going, from the way this team wasn't executing, from the pace this team was playing at. They would have some decent moments, like the first six minutes of last night's game, and then it would just fall flat on their face. So that's what ended up getting people axed. And uh, now you got to show up and you got to make sure that you start playing so different players don't end up, of course, being the next things that end up getting traded before the deadline as the deadline nears in the next coming months. So, obviously, it's on the players now to step up with the new head coach. And on the new head coach, like Mike Yo already kind of paraphrasing his quote, he said to accept the challenge and run with it and be able to find the way to correct this and be able to solve the issues that have been happening, which is, of course, as we know, many of them. But when it comes to the avalanche... 
We have a guy that's been very successful going to the Avalanche. Knack now has two goals and three assists on the season for five points. And has been doing really well since going to the Colorado Avalanche. We get to play Nicholas Albe Kubel again. But he's the third line with Newhook and O'Connor. Then it's Megna, Yost, and Helm for the fourth. Second, Nachuskin, Kadri, Burakovsky. Kadri's a guy you have to watch. He's been blazing hot. He's been absolutely ridiculous um, lately and this season, especially replacing, not replacing, but stepping in for Nathan McKinnon doing his injury. He's a big player to watch other than the first line of Landis, Kyle McKinnon, and Radden, who you have to watch every night. Our defense is Taze McCarr. Jack Johnson, Samuel Gerard, Curtis McNamee, and Eric Johnson. So if you can push the pace a little bit against guys like Jack and Curtis, maybe you can get going a little bit against their defense there. But the Flyers have not been pushing the pace good at all recently. So hopefully the head coaching fire can kind of spark the Jets a little bit and be able to get them to do that since they do have guys like Byram, JT Confer, who's a very solid defensive forward, and also Ryan Murray out as well as obviously Francois and Kemper, which we've been over. Now, it seems like we're not going to be switching much up. Martin Jones is going to be in net tonight. It's going to be Yandel and Seal or Sandheim Braun, uh, Provorov and Risto, Lindblom Brown and Max Willman. Um, you're going to have James Van Riemsdyk, Lawden and Zach McEwen, Morgan Frost, um, Travis Konechny, centered by Kevin Hayes, Claude Giroux, Sean Couturier, and then you have Cam Atkinson, and then there's nobody scratched, uh, Ryan Ellis, obviously is out with the lower body, Broussard hit Nate Thompson's shoulder, and same with Fairby for the shoulder, and then Connor Bunneman was loaned to Lehigh Valley, and Wilman's up, so that's of course why Max Wilman is on the fourth line. So this has been a preview to the Flyers and Colorado Avalanche, again, you would think a team would come out with a lot more fire and jets in their skates, after obviously the head coach got fired. Um, for multitudes of reasons, but one being, of course, the play on the ice in an eight-game losing streak, and also one being failure by upper management, but that's something that I'll save for maybe when, when we talk about it on the JB and Steel show that will be coming out tomorrow that I do over on the Steel Flyers Network with Steel Flyers, and also gets posted here as the role version on Skype, so stay tuned for that. As in our NHL segment, we'll be talking about the Benning and Green firing, and also, of course, what they're going on with the Canadian GM search, but also, obviously, the Flyers, NAV, and Michelle Turin being let go. And then, of course, Mike Yo being named the interim. And it's seeming like they might go for an assistant rather than actually plucking a head coach and getting a new head coach like the Canucks obviously went with that route and got somebody and had somebody in mind right away. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Enjoy the night, and hopefully... The Flyers have an answer tonight because there's not really any answers who say coming into the game other than, the, I guess, other than if you say play like the how you did better possession the puck, better zone exits in the first six minutes of the game yesterday before you got trampled on. But other than that, there's not really much to pick from, obviously, an eight-game losing streak. They just got to flip it around and get going, and hopefully the coaching fire kind of sparks the Jets a little bit. So peace out, everybody. A special thanks to those that have subscribed. Please continue to subscribe to keep the channel going and growing. Down below on the easy-to-use sub button on the easy-to-use Professor Joe Widget up above. Let's go, Flyers. Let's try to pull out of this skid and get going with the first night of Mike Yo. Let's make him 1-0. Peace out, everybody.